Okay. Yes, we are live live now. Good morning, all of you. Good morning, all the students and viewers. This is Muhammad Riyazuddin, Principal Telangana Model School, Jara Sangam from Sangaradi District. Now we have the webinar session from the subject Commerce and Accountancy. The topic is consignment accounts. This session is going to be handled by Mrs. V. Premalata. Uh, PGT Commerce from Telangana Model School, Bullaram, Jinnaram Mandal, Sangharadi District. This is the problem solving session on the topic consignment from the valuation of unsold stock. In the previous uh, sessions, we studied about the meaning and concept of consignment business, accounting treatment in the books mm -hmm. of consigner and consignee, mm -hmm. and uh, difference between consignment and sale. And we also studied about the different types of expenses incurred by consigner and consignee on the consignment business. In this today's session, we learn about the accounting treatment or the books of accounts maintained by consigner and consignee through practical problems. Student, this is very important session and it's a compulsory 10 marks question in your board exam. I request all the students to listen the session carefully. Now I invite the Premlata Madam to deliver his resources. Please, Madam, welcome. Good, good afternoon, one and all. Uh, welcome, to, uh, welcome to today's session uh, for intermediate second year students. Unit 2, Chapter 3, Consignment Accounts. Uh, today, we will be discussing about valuation of unsold stock. In the previous sessions, uh, already we discussed about what is consignment, uh, everything. And even we solved problems based on uh, cost of goods sent, only cost of goods sent. And we have done even one problem also. In today's session, we will be learning about or you will be uh, gaining knowledge about the accounting treatment in the books of consignor when there is unsold stock. And uh, to gain knowledge about accounting treatment in the books of consignor when stock is unsold. Okay, children, if at all you remember what we discussed in our previous session, we have seen what do you mean by a consignment? That is, a consigner will be sending goods to consignee. So, consigner, whatever goods he is sending, we will call it as consignment. And why the consigner will be sending goods to consignee? Consigner will be sending goods for making more and more profits. And consignee will sell on behalf of consigner to get commission. This is the main concept of consignment. Okay. When goods are sent from consignor to consignee, we have seen that different expenses are incurred by the consignor as well as expenses are incurred by the consignee. See, this is one of the important topic, children, for today's session. When we want to calculate valuation of unsold stock, when we want to calculate uh, uh, unsold stock, you need to know the difference between recurring expenses and non-recurring expenses at consignee's end and at consignor's end. So what are recurring expenses already we discussed in the previous session. It's just a recapitulation. All the expenses which are incurred by the consignor for loading, for uh, uh, freight or transit insurance, duty, other expenses. That is on trans, on road. When the goods are on the road or the goods until they reach to the consignee, all expenses, these are direct expenses, okay? And the till the pre premises of the consignee's premises, whatever expenses are incurred by the consignee, like unloading, duty, tax, freight, dock dues, off troy, or carriage to, up to his place, from the dock up to his place, up to the premises, all are called non-recurring expenses. That is expenses happening only one time okay expenses which happen only one time or we can call them as direct expenses or we can these expenses which happen only one time are called as non-recurring expenses but some expenses happen at, at the consignee's premises expenses while in the premises like paying rent paying insurance salary to salesman advertisement charges selling expenses salesman commission etc these all are recurring in nature which are paid again and again so these expenses are recurring expenses, okay? 
so this is the difference between non recurring expenses and recurring expenses you have to make the difference children between non recurring expenses and recurring expenses because when we calculate uh, calculate this valuation of unsold stock only non recurring expenses of consignor and non recurring expenses of consignee only will be taken we don't consider recurring expenses recurring expenses will not be taken that is the reason you need to know the difference between recurring expense and non recurring expenses okay now already in the previous session we have discussed now what is a consignment account the main objective of this account is to prepare profit and loss account um, and uh, on a particular consignment it is a nominal account all expenses of the consignment businesses are debited and all the incomes of the consignment business are credited in this account if you remember in the previous session we uh, i told only um, the specimen this is a specimen of the consignment account we will be learning bit by bit we we have seen what what we take on the debit side because it is a nominal account all expenses will be debited and it, it all incomes will be credited in the previous class we have seen till goods sent on consignment account it is an expense to the consignor so he will be debiting it and to cash and bank if you remember what we discussed when we write cash and bank all the expenses of the consignor all the expenses of the consignor need to be taken to cash and bank because the consignor will be paying his expenses either through cash or he will be giving a check that is the reason we need to take to cash and bank we are not going to take any individual expense account if you remember because in consignment proper accounting treatment is not done or traditional accounting is not done in consignment account because for one consignor there may be so many different consignment accounts yes or no many consignments will be there so if at all he start making each and every individual account then it will be very difficult for him to maintain all the accounts for this purpose what they will be doing he will be limiting the accounts in consignment account should be limited so whatever expenses of a particular consignment we will be debiting all that expenses to that particular consignment account and all the incomes to that particular consignment account that is the reason no other individual expense account any other account we don't maintain and uh, when a, when any expense incurred by the consignee what we do we debit it to the consignee account see to consignee account any consignment the consignor need to prepare uh, will be having one consignee account definitely he will be having that is the reason the expenses whatever are paid by the consignee should be debited to the consignee account we will be taking to the consignee account okay so expenses incurred by the consignor you need to debit to cash and uh, to cash and bank account and if at all the expenses incurred by the consignee we will be taking to his particular personal account to consignee account commission also same thing to consignee account commission this all we have discussed in the previous session and sales also sales are made by consign afterwards he will be remitting the amount so we whenever sales are made we will be taking into consignee account only next here another um, next step whenever we are talking about unsold stock stock on consignment that is stock will be taking on the credit side of the consignment account okay only this will be added new uh, in this session like when we say valuation of unsold stock unsold stock should be shown on the credit side we all know that unsold stock who will be the owner of that unsold stock consignor or consignee consignor only will be the owner of the unsold stock yes or no consignee just he will take the goods he will collect the goods from the consignor he will sell whatever unsold stock is there he need to return to the consignee uh, consignor consignee will be returning to the consignor that is the inventory the unsold stock will be in the inventory of the consignor only not consignee okay so that is the reason we are taking unsold stock in consignment account credit side in this consignment account credit side so this is a specimen form so all the expenses what you need to it is a nominal account consignment account is a nominal account so all the expenses we take on the debit side and all the incomes we will be taking on the credit side of the consignment account in this uh, topic valuation of unsold stock now what is valuation of unsold stock children that is cost of unsold stock in the previous session in the previous class we have seen that like if 100 goods are sent all the goods are sold 
100 goods are sent 100 goods are sold but when when the concept of unsold stock comes 100 goods are sent but only 80 like let us say 100 then valuation of unsold stock for how much uh, uh, radios we need to prepare this valuation of unsold stock it is for 20 radios yes 20 radios is uh, unsold so for that value we need to make out so what is the uh, uh, pro forma for that we have to take cost of unsold stock that is for example 20 radios add proportionate expenses of consigner and add pro proportionate direct expenses or non recurring expenses of consignee only non recurring expenses only should be taken then you will get valuation of unsold stock valuation of unsold stock now what do you mean by this proportionate expense of consignor or proportionate direct expense of consignee why we need to take for example i'll just give you an example let us take uh, a consignor has uh, uh, purchased two machines okay to bring that machines till his premises he need to pay 5000 rupees uh, transport charges now 5000 rupees the cost of each machine is let us say 10000 10000 so total cost is 20000 and he has paid 5000 rupees as transport transportation charges to receive that machines until his premises now what we will tell like even when we you have seen a depreciation chapter the first expenditure that is capital expenditure whenever we are purchasing any material for machine or whatever it is the expenses which are incurred it could be transport it could be loading unloading or it could be any charges which are incurred will be added to the asset will be added to the cost of the asset yes or no so here when we are saying proportionate expense that means for two machines it is 5000 rupees then what is for one machine value for one machine what will be the cost the transportation charges we have to divide between two machines no it is not like that for one machine only you will be taking the transport charges no you have to take individually that is proportionate equal for each two machines equally you have to distribute the expense so that 5000 how how we will divide we will divide 2500 for one machine and 2500 for another machine okay so the cost of the machine now how much it will be 5000 plus 2500 it will be 7500 yes 7500 that means we need to add back all the expenses okay so proportionately we need to take that is equally we need to divide that whole uh, expense this to whole stock okay so that is the reason we take proportionate expenses of the consignor and add proportionate direct expenses of the consignee whatever expenses are incurred at consignee and also we need to add back and whatever expenses incurred at consignor end also we need to add back to the cost of unsold stock then you will get you will be getting the valuation of unsold stock okay now we will understand more clearly children with an example here we have one practical problem Rajiv and Company of Chennai consign 100 radios to Teja and Company of Hyderabad. The cost of each radio was rupees 500. Rajiv and Company paid insurance rupees 500, freight rupees 800. Account sales was received from Teja and Company, showing the sale of 80 radios at rupees 600 each. 80 radios at rupees 600 each. The following expenses were deducted by them: selling expenses rupees 150. Commission rupees two thousand four hundred. Rajiv and Company received a bank draft for the balance due. Prepare important ledger accounts in the books of Rajiv and Company and Teja and Company. Now, first we will what we need from the question. What things you need to take? We will segregate children. See, Rajiv and Company is our consignor. Teja and Company is our consignee. Okay, Rajiv and Company is our consignor. Teja and Company is our consignee. So Rajiv and Company has sent 100 radios at rupees 500. That is 50,000 worth goods were sent to Teja and Company. So goods sent on consignment, how much children? Goods sent on cost of goods sent, it is 50,000 rupees. Okay. So cost of goods sent is 50,000 rupees. 
okay so what are the expenses incurred by the consignor consignor has incurred insurance 500 rupees freight 800 rupees okay at the uh, consignee and for how much he sold how much he sent rajiv and company consignor how many how many worth goods he so, uh, sent 100 radios he sent so teja and company how much he sold he sold only 80 radios how much he sold he sold 80 radios only at 600 per radio so what is the cost what are the sales then 48000 is our sales so 100 radios are sent and 80 radios are sold so how many radios are unsold here how many radios are unsold children 20 radios so 20 radios will be our unsold stock 100 radios are sent 80 are sold 20 is unsold okay so what are the expenses how incurred at rajiv and company that is consignor what are the expenses incurred at consignor and cost of goods sent is 50000 insurance is rupees 500 freight is rupees 800 so one thing what you need to remember children whatever expenses incurred by the consignor are always direct expenses only but at teja and company that is consignee and only we need to make a difference whether it is direct expense or indirect expense whether it is direct expense or indirect expense why we need to make the difference only direct expense the proportionate direct expenses of the consignee only need to be taken okay so sales 48000 so selling expenses 150 selling expenses are recurring expense or non recurring expense children it is recurring in nature so we will not be taking recurring in nature selling expenses are always recurring in nature okay next commission is 2400 so what are the expenses incurred by the uh, teja and company selling expenses 150 commission paid to teja and company is 2400 for selling the goods okay just to make a note of this information children because when we go to next slide when i say the amounts you should be in a position to tell note down okay just i'll give you one minute just to make a note of it children cost of goods and is 50000 that is 100 radios at rupees 500 children whenever you read a question whenever question is given practical question is given you just make a rough notes like this so that it will be very easy for you what you need after reading the question what things are needed for you after reading the question you need to know what are the goods center cost of goods center what are the expenses incurred by consignor and what are the sales made by consignee and what are the expenses incurred by consignee and what is the commission incurred by consignee only this information is enough if we have this information we can solve the problem okay is it clear did you make a note of it children now shall i go for the next slide okay now we will see calculation of unsold stock for calculation of unsold stock cost of unsold stock is 20 radios at rupees 500 so okay 20 radios at rupees 500 so what is the value 10000 rupees okay cost of unsold stock 20 radios are unsold so e cost of each radio is 500 so it comes to 10000 now we need to add proportionate expenses of the consignor expenses incurred by the consignor always remember children remember what you need to remember the expenses incurred by the consignor are always direct expenses only few expenses but maximum it will be direct expense only okay 500 plus 800 total 1300 so 1300 is for 100 radios 1300 is for 100 radios now we are saying proportionate what do you mean by proportionate now for equal to this 20 radios we need to take out out of 1300 for 20 radios what will be the cost for 100 radios it is 1300 for 20 radius how much that is 1300 into 20 by 100 that will be 260 rupees that for 20 radios the expenses of the consignor is 260 rupees like out of 1300 1300 is for 100 radios now we we need to take proportionate expense okay so for 20 radios only we need to take the expenses so for 20 radios the expense will come to 260 now 
add proportionate expense of consignee it is nil because whatever expense incurred by the consignee is recurring in nature so recurring expenses we will not take we need we should not consider only direct expenses or non recurring expenses only should be added to the cost of the unsold stock that is the reason we were stressing that you need to make a difference between recurring expense and non recurring expense okay so valuation of unsold stock the valuation of unsold stock is now 10000 to 60 rupees so what is the cost of uh, valuation of unsold stock children value of unsold stock is 10000 to 60 okay in other way also we can do children here we have taken for 20 radios only but you can take for at a time you can take for 100 like the total for total also you can calculate out of the total you can take for 20 radios for example 100 radios at 500 each it is 50000 1300 total uh, expenses incurred by the consignor consignee is not having any expense so it comes to 15 51300 So fifty one thousand three hundred is the total cost for hundred radios. Now for what is twenty radios? So for hundred radios it is fifty one thousand three hundred. For twenty radios how much? So fifty one thousand three hundred into twenty divided by hundred that also comes to ten thousand two sixty. Okay. In any ways you can prepare. Okay. You can calculate unsold stock in any of the way. Either taking total value and making that to twenty radios or individually may taking only for 20 radios okay whichever you feel easy you people can follow that method for calculation of unsold stock so the calculation valuation of unsold stock is how much 10000 to 60 okay in the books of rajiv and company that is consignor what are the three accounts we prepare children we prepare consignment account we prepare consignee account and we prepare uh, goods sent on consignment account okay these are the three accounts prepared in the books of the consignor now we will see the consignment account okay consignment account is a nominal account all the expenses should be debited because what is the rule for nominal account debit all expenses and credit all incomes and gains okay all the expenses should be debited and all the income should be credited okay so again i am telling children consignment account we limit all the accounts that is the reason any expense related to one particular consignment should be taken in that consignment account only okay why we prepare this consignment account why the consignor prepares this consignment account to know the profit how much profit he earned out of this consignment to know that profit earned the consignor will be preparing the consignment account so first already we have seen the um pro forma no what we need to take on the debit side to goods sent on consignment goods sent on consignment how much work goods were sent okay goods sent is 100 radios at rupees 500 each radio that is 50000 so total work of goods sent is 50000 next what we will be taking we will be taking expenses of the consignor so to cash or bank all the expenses of the consignor need to be taken into cash or bank account okay so expenses pay, made by the consignor one is 500 and 800 insurance 500 right 800 rupees so total expenses incurred by the consignor is 1300 to send the goods to consignee the consignor has incurred 1300 rupees as expense okay next expenses incurred by the consignee that is teja and company what are the expenses paid by him 150 rupees selling expenses teja and company incurred 150 rupees as selling expense okay these are the expenses paid by the consignee but consignee will be collecting this amount from consignor you know that is the reason here we are taking to teja and company account okay so to teja and company 150 rupees selling teja company incurred at teja and company's end okay that is 150 rupees next to teja and company commission what is the commission paid by to teja and company for selling the goods it is 2400 we all know that consignment consignees uh, sell the goods on behalf of consignor for commission 
if he doesn't get this commission there is no concept of consignment only okay so to teja and company what is the commission paid to consignee that is 2400 next so on debit side what you'll have to goods sent on consignment to cash bank that is expenses incurred by the consignor to teja and company expenses incurred by the consignee and to teja and company commission paid to the consignee okay children what things we get in consignment account debit side one is cost of goods and expenses incurred by the consignor expenses incurred by the consignee and commission paid to the consignee four items okay on the credit side we have sales now who is selling goods teja and company selling goods so 80 radios at what cost he sold the goods at rupees 600 each so 80 radios at rupees 600 that is 48000 is our sales so what we will write we take any sales account no we need to credit to by teja and company account okay so by teja and company sales 48000 okay because whatever uh, expenses incurred these are uh, amount sold by teja and company so we need to write in teja and company account only okay by teja and company account 48000 is our sales next by stock on consignment by stock on consignment that is valuation of unsold stock already we have seen in the previous slide how we uh, got a valuation of unsold stock children we write it as stock on consignment 10260 10260 how we got this 10260 20 radios unsold unsold stock is 20 radios 20 radios then we added proportionate expenses of the consignor okay that is 20 radios at 500 10000 proportionate expenses of the consignor that is 260 total 10260 is our unsold stock so now we will see whether we have got profit or loss on this consignment we need to balance it so which side is uh, more children debit side or credit side credit side total is more 48000 plus 10260 so 58260 okay then we need to balance it okay to goods sent on consignment 50000 plus cash bank 1300 teja and company account 150 commission 2400 so total 53850 so when we did it 58260 minus 53000 8 we get 4410 is our profit 4410 is our profit so the consignor has made 4410 a profit out of this consignment okay so cost of goods sold he incurred 1300 as expense uh, expenses incurred at uh, consignee and 150 this is also paid by consignor only okay teja and company commission is also expense for the consignor only okay 2400 so what are the sales made 48000 and the stock 10260 so out of this consignment the consignor made 4410 as profit okay what is the profit made by the consignor 4410 if you are very much clear children that what amount you need to take and what uh, headings you need to write up, it is very very easy uh, problem children and calculation of unsold stock it is very important here so if you are very much clear or which if you can make a difference between uh, recurring expense and non recurring expense of consignor and consignee then also it will be very easy for you to calculate valuation of unsold stock now we see in the books of consignor consignment account and consignee account now why the consignor prepares this consignee account to know how much amount is due from consignee how much consignee should give him balance amount how much amount should be remitted by consignee to the consignor to know this the consignor will be preparing consignee account okay so to consignment total what are the sales made is 48 Thousand. So the consignee should give total forty-eight thousand. Okay. Out of which uh, did the, the in the question did they say that the consignee has given anything as an advance? 
no nothing has been given if at all anything is given as an advance then we take it as by bank account and we will take advance if at all it is a bills of exchange we write it as by bills of exchange and we write the amount but here we are not having any bills uh, advance amount so it is nil then what uh, consignee has uh, deducted consignee will be deducting out, out of 48000 he will be deducting his expenses incurred by him okay 150 rupees so the by consignment account so out of this consignment what are the expenses incurred or paid by consignee that he will be collecting from consignor only no in account sales he'll send the same thing no out of sales he will deduct all the amount then what balance amount should be remitted to the consignor okay so uh, 150 rupees he will be deducting then his commission 2400 rupees he didn't give any advance so out of 48000 he will be deducting 2400 and 150 so the balance is 45450 so how much the consignee should pay or the consignor should receive from consignee it is 45450 rupees okay to know this value the consignor will be preparing this consignee account okay in consignment account in consign in the books of consignor three accounts are prepared one is consignment account consignee account and goods and on consignment account why consignment account is prepared consignment account is prepared to know how much profit is made out of this consignment and why the consignor will be preparing this consignee account the consignor will be preparing this consignee account to know the amount due to him by the consignee or how much amount the consignee should give to the consignor to know that the consignor will be preparing this consignee account next goods sent on consignment account okay so out of the in this consignment the goods sent is 50000 rupees this amount will be transferred to trading account okay then the amount will be transferred this amount will be transferred to trading account so goods sent on consignment account you will have only two transactions here one is by consignment account 50000 okay by consignment account 50000 because entry what it will be goods sent on consignment consignment account data to goods sent on consignment account so in this consignment total worth of goods sent is 50000 at the end of the year we will be transferring this amount to trading account okay so that is the reason goods sent on consignment account data to trading account it will be transferred to trading account so to trading account 50000 only two transactions will be entered in goods sent on consignment account children okay so these are the three accounts prepared in books of consignor what are the three accounts which are prepared in the books of consignor one is consignment account why we prepare consignment account to know how much profit or loss incurred in this consignment whether the consignor has made profit or loss to know that we prepare consignment account then why consignee account is prepared to know the balance amount due or how much amount the consignee should pay to the consignor to know that the consignee account is prepared next goods sent on consignment account is prepared these are the three accounts which are prepared in the books of the consignor and in the books of the consignee we prepare one account that is consignor account now in the books of the consignee only one account is prepared consignee will be preparing only one account that is consignor account why the consignee will be preparing consignor account now the consignee also should know how much amount he should give to consignor consignor will be preparing consignee account consignee will be preparing consignor account why consignee will be preparing consignor account consignee will be preparing consignor account to know how much account amount he is due or how much amount he should uh, should pay to the consignor okay so what are the sales made by him 48000 any advance he has given no so expenses yes he incurred selling expenses 150 rupees next commission 2400 so to total bank account that is how much amount should be remitted by the consignee to the consignor it is 45450 okay children 
actually in the exam maximum they will be asking in the books of consigner uh, prepare all the accounts which are prepared in the books of consigner but you you should also know uh, what is the account prepared in consignee books also in the consignee books we prepare only consignor account the consignee prepares this account to know how much amount he should remit to the consignor how much amount he is due to pay to the consignor okay so total cash how much sales he has made 48000 and two bank any advance is there no to cash account yes 150 expenses he will be deducting commission he will deduct 2400 and balance amount he will be remitting to the consignor that is 45450 rupees okay what we have learned children in this we have learned accounting treatment in the books of consignor when there is unsold stock consignment account consignee account and goods and on consignment account we have seen in the books of consignor three accounts are prepared one is consignment account consignee account and goods and on consignment account and in the books of consignee only one account is prepared that is consignor account is prepared okay task for the day children now solve the given problem on the valuation of unsold stock okay here on 1st january 2015 kamala of hyderabad consigned goods valued at rupees 30000 to ravi of madras kamala paid cartage and other expenses rupees 2000 on 1st april 2015 ravi sent the account sales with the following information 50% of the goods sold for rupees 22000 Ravi incurred expenses amounting to rupees twelve hundred. Ravi is entitled to receive commission at five percent on sales. Bank draft note was enclosed for the balance. Prepare the necessary ledger accounts in the books of Kamala. See, he in the exam also you will be getting the question same. But after reading the question, you need, should not get any confusion, children. First thing you need to make a rough note. What consigner? What are the things you need to write under the head consigner and consignee? Okay. What are the worth of goods sent? Now here, what are the worth goods value of goods sent children? It is thirty thousand rupees. Okay, here total value only is given. Um, like uh, material, how much it is sent? It is not. It is not given. Only amount is given. Direct amount is given. Okay, thirty thousand. So what is the cost of goods sent children? Thirty thousand. Expenses incurred by uh, consignor two thousand rupees. So Goods sent on consignment thirty thousand. Cartage expenses two thousand. Okay, now if we write on consignee side, what we write consignee uh, sales. How much um, for how much uh, value the goods are sold? Fifty percent of the goods are sold for rupees twenty two thousand. That is half of the goods are sold for twenty two thousand. Okay, twenty two thousand. And what are the expenses incurred? By Ravi, that is Tanzani. It is twelve hundred rupees. Next commission entitled five percent on sales. So commission, how much? On twenty two thousand, you have to take five percent. So twenty two thousand into five by hundred, it comes to eleven hundred. So eleven hundred will be is commission. Okay. Now you have to calculate valuation of unsold stock. How you will take fifty percent of the goods? Okay. On total thirty thousand, you take thirty thousand plus two divided by half. That is fifty percent of the goods sold. You no, know, fifty percent is unsold. Okay, or you can take fifteen uh, thousand and two thousand fifty percent one thousand. In that way also, you can calculate children. It, it it depends upon you how you want to uh, calculate valuation of unsold stock. You take either fifty percent of the goods and you take. Uh, Uh, proportionate expenses of the consignor here why we don't take uh, ravi's uh, expenses that is uh, proportionate expense of the consignee because it is direct expense or indirect expense recurring expense or non recurring expense if in the question simply they give incurred expense you should treat it as selling expense and it is recurring in nature we will not take it for calculating valuation of unsold stock okay children whenever in the question if they give as incurred expenses or selling expenses it means that expense is recurring in nature we should not take for calculating unsold stock 
is it clear children try to solve this problem if you have any doubt um, uh, the solution will be kept after two days in the chat box children okay okay thank you children uh, by the end of this session i think uh, you people are uh, uh, clear with the calculation of uh, valuation of unsold stock how to calculate uh, unsold stock and even um, calculating preparing ledger accounts in the books of the consignor and even uh, ledger accounts in the books of the consignee okay we have seen like uh, preparing ledger accounts in the books of consignor three accounts only we need to prepare one is consignment account other one is consignee account and goods sent on consignment account in the books of consignee we will prepare only consignor account okay why we prepare consignment account children to know the profit consignor how much profit he made out of this consignment to know that we will be preparing this consignment account next is consignee account why we prepare this consignee account consignee account is prepared to know how much amount is due or how much amount the consignee should remit to the consignor to know that the consignor prepares the consignee account next goods sent on consignment account how much worth the goods are sent on consignment account to know that the consignor will be preparing goods sent on consignment account okay in the books of consignee the consignee he, he he doesn't need anything no only thing what he should know how much amount he should remit to the consignor to know that he prepares consignor account that's it okay children it is very easy if you understand the concept if you understand if you can make out before after reading the question and before solving the question you make out a table what are the things you need what are the things you need goods sent on consignment expenses incurred by the consignor expenses incurred by the consignee commission paid to the consignee what are the amount of sales made and if it is valuation of unsold stock problem you will be calculating valuation of unsold stock that's it out of this you can make out profit then if you prepare consignee account you will know the balance amount how much he will be he should remit to the consignor that's it okay is it clear children and the thank you one and all for uh, um, attending to this session stay home stay safe and stay productive and stay connected thank you children okay thank you madam thank you prem thank you Premier. sir Premier. thank you sir uh, childrens and uh, i have watched the that uh, chat box madam we got the some positive responses like uh, Uh, nice explanation another all that thank so you, i i thanks to all the viewers for watching this session carefully and uh, i want to give one suggestion that try to solve more problems at home on this topic by that you will get some more confidence on it and uh, don't forget that this topic is compulsory question in your board exam for 10 marks so if you are confident on this topic consignment like uh, calculation of unsold stock and other things then easily you will get 10 out of 10 marks so again i request all the students to solve to practice more problems on this topic from your textbook and finally once again i thanks to all the students and i i, I thanks to the uh, premlata madam for giving the wonderful session and thanks to one and all all thank you Th thank you sir thank you